and the wheel cell. So for refraction, refraction transmission of waves, we may have a, a wave which is propagating with a vector ki, and this will is going to have an, a vector, electric field vector ei, and is moving toward the, an interface, the interface between two different materials or between two different media. The difference between the two different media, we can denote them simply one and two, or epsilon one, epsilon two, and the mu one, mu two, where the first one, it represents the primitivity of the medium, and uh, uh, eta one, this would be the, the sorry, no, this is wrong, not this, this is impedance, sorry, I want to write this, uh, this was a mistake, so we just wanted to, to denote that these are the permittivity of the medium and the other one is the permeability. So, uh, whenever we, this is uh, hitting a certain interface, what is the first uh, piece of information that we might remember from the previous courses? That's not a good question, that's not a good question. Let's try very well. Tom. Tom, hold on, I'm sure so. Okay, sorry for this small uh, interruption. So, uh, we have a way that is going toward a specific uh, boundary, and uh, what we might expect is the, the part of the wave might go, might be transmitted to the new medium. So if we put here a detector, okay, let's assume that we have here a detector. The question is that will the signal that we're going to detect in this detector only be zero or different from zero? Which means that if the signal is zero, probably the transmission of the signal transmission uh, would converge to zero for for several reasons, or otherwise this would be. Let me check. Where are we fine here with the settings? Everybody's here present. Sorry, I thought you were writing something in the comment section. Or different from zero, which means that the transmission is larger than zero or non zero. No, sorry. No, this is larger than zero. Now, at the same time, we might expect uh, some reflection backwards. Okay, so this would be K uh, reflected. And this would have some electric field component. And of course, these two waves, they have also the magnetic field component, magnetic field intensity component. Now, uh, this is what we want to do. The, the first aspect that we can consider, or the first important uh, variable here, is what, uh, what, are this, what are the relative properties of these two media. The most extreme case would be the following. First, we could have a conductor, and second, we can have a dielectric. Okay, so depending on these two, uh, depending on these two different uh, properties of the materials, we might get different, uh, uh, what's the name, different reflection and uh, transmission. First, let's consider the case when we have a, a very good conductor on the on the right side. So, if the wave is propagating in this direction, in order to, to do this, we have, we have to write the complete expressions for the electric field vector and the magnetic field vector for the incident wave, for the reflected wave, and for the transmitted wave, which is on this side of of, of, the, in, of this region or on this side. And uh, I want to ask you, so. What happens, or what have we done so far, when we are dealing with, uh, when we had boundaries? Someone can answer this? So, if we have a boundary or interface between two different mediums, what do we look for? Boundary. So we look for the boundary conditions. Okay, so there are some conditions where uh, the properties on one side are, so there is a relationship between what is going on uh, between one side and the other. If you remember, uh, for the boundary conditions, we have the, the uh, 
uh, intensities, intensities, which component of the intensity is preserved? Is it the tangent or the normal component? The tangent. That's correct. What about for fluxes? For the fluxes, the normal component is, is conserved. For intensities, the tension, you are right. So, if we are going to write a boundary condition based on intensity, we just look at H and E, okay? So, which one is the intensity? Intensity is H and, uh, sorry, E and H, and the flux is D and B. Okay? So, this is our basic information, we never forget. Now, what is the next step? The next step is that we need to write the incident wave. So what are the, the components of an incident wave? And by the way, so let's see which notation we can use. So if this is a KI for the incident wave, and this is for the reflected wave. So let me write it here, reflected. And this is the incident, incident wave. What is the direction of the magnetic field here? Is it coming out of the board or into the board? How do you answer this question? Uh, the reflection uh, or the reflection is coming out of the board. The incident wave is going through the board. I think into the board or out of the board. The incident is going into the board. The reflection out of the board. Okay, let's, can you consider this expression, E cross H, this is equal to K. So the cross product of the electric field with the magnetic field intensity, it points to the direction of the wave. So if we use the right hand rule, this is the electric field, and we should come to the magnetic field. So I think you are, you are not completely right. So the HI is going to be this, so it's pointing out of the board. Okay. And uh, the sorry. Yeah, on the to Yes, we go. No, we go. Yes, 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 the screwdriver, so when you screw a driver, so sorry, when you, uh, when you screw a bolt, sorry, when you, have a, when you screw a bolt, you don't know whether you should do clockwise or counterclockwise. If you have to go in, you turn it clockwise, uh, because when you move it clockwise, you are pointing down, but if you have to take out the bolt, you rotate it counterclockwise, and you look at the screwdriver, and you say, which direction should I turn this, then you do that. The only difference is that if you have, if you have high pressure containers, you should be careful, for example, sometimes at the gas containers that you use at home, sometimes they are reversed. You should be careful about that. But if it is a screw with a right hand rule, so I think here we should have the following. Okay? So the H reflect that it's here. Now we need to write what is the incident wave. The incident wave, E, the electric field vector is equal to what? What is the direction of E? Well, we have to define first the x, y, z. So let's assume that here we have the x pointing up, the y pointing out of the board, okay, and the z is pointing in this direction, okay. So it looks like the we can assume that the interface it is located at z equal to zero. So let's this location here, this is at z equal to zero because. Uh, z backwards would be negative z. So the electric field, what is the direction of the electric field intensity? E is always equal to ax, e0, e to the power, minus j, beta, z, whatever. So we follow this, uh, this task for this uh, model, and then we have, this is the direction, the polarization of the wave times e, let's consider this one e incident 0, e to the power uh, j beta 1 z. Now, e to the power j beta 1 z, should it be a plus or minus? What do you think? 
Mm, it should be minus. That's correct. It should be minus because we are broken. We are moving toward the plus z direction. So we get a minus. Then we are in the. So this is the amplitude of the electric field divided by the eta. And then we have the same propagator, which is E minus J beta 1 z. This is the incident wave, the reflected wave, reflected. Reflected. Okay, I try to do my best. Reflected. Now, this is the reflected wave. Let's try this incident, incident, reflected. And the reflected wave, we denote that this is again x. And the amplitude is reflected wave 0 e to the power of 1. This is plus j beta 1 uh, z because the reflected wave is pointing in the negative z direction. And on the hr, this will be equal to what is the direction of hr? So the magnitude of hr is pointing into the board, which means that this is minus y times the amplitude of, of the reflected wave divided by eta 1 times the propagation factor. So this is the incident wave and this is the reflected wave. And uh, at this stage, we just need to write the boundary condition. And uh, the boundary condition, what is it? We have that, and uh, we should assume, sorry, wait, okay, and here, so these were, we should also look for what is the electric field on this side transmitted. So what is the, the transmitted electric field here? What is the electric field inside the conductor? We get the following, okay? So, in this case, the boundary condition, it can tell to us that E incident wave plus, or we can do the following, the electric field vector in region 1, we can say that the electric field vector in region 1 should be equal to the electric field vector in region 2, okay? And these values, we have to denote this for Z equal to 0, and this is for Z equal to 0 also, okay? And uh, what is what is the electric field in the first region here? We just add this two, okay? It's simply adding this term and this term. That's it. So then it looks like this E1, this is equal to, uh, we have here AX, or X, direction of unit vector X, EI0, E to the power minus J, beta 1 Z, uh, plus this component, Plus, we can even put uh, uh, put here the parentheses because the direction of AX is the same. And we have ER0 times E to the power plus J beta 1 Z. So this is E1, this is equal to E2. What is E2? This is simply 0. And uh, if this is equal to 0, what can uh, we say? So, if we evaluate these electric fields at z equal to zero, what would be the exponential terms? So, if we insert here z, z equal to zero, what do we get here? What is e to the power zero? So from here, we see that if we have a wave that is incident on a perfect conductor, because of the boundary conditions, we obtain that the wave that is going to be reflected, the amplitude, it will be negative the, incident, negative the amplitude of the incident uh, wave. So we get ER0 is equal to EI0 
uh, zero. So this is what we uh, get from, from this expression. We may need to take some space here. And then we need also to look at the, the magnetic field vector and for the magnetic field intensity. So what do you say here for the H? What is the magnetic field intensity? Let's put here medium 2, and this is also medium 2. So they both should be equal to 0. Now, the, the next step is actually we, need, we can try to... So apparently we figured out how the relationship between these should be. So the only thing that we need to do next is we have to substitute here. So this boundary conditions, I think we know how, how they are. And from here, we can say that the, okay, so this is not, we don't change anything much here. But for the reflected wave, we can say that ER, this would be equal to minus, minus x times EI zero, e to the power minus j beta one seven. And similarly, the HI would be equal to y, E i zero divided by eta e to the power minus j beta one z. This would be the, the reflected uh, component. And then, then what remains here is that we need to write down what is the complete electric field on, on, on this side, on this side on medium one. Okay. The, the complete energy field here, E1, would be equal to E incident, let me write incident, plus E reflected. So, once we do this, we can see that the, the amplitudes will be the same. So, you can factor, you can uh, So here we have the following, we have the same direction, x, and this would be the e i zero, e to the power minus j beta one set. Then minus Professor Nukalo. Sorry? Uh Nukalo. Okay, this is what I think this is better. Okay, so so if we this is what uh, what we get, we just need to add these two terms together, and this is again beta one because we are in medium one, and in this case, what are we going to get? E one would be equal to. So what do we expect here? So we have here e to the power i theta, and this would be cosine theta minus i sine theta. So in this case, what do we find if we uh, take with a minus sign here, we put minus, and this is also, uh, wait a second, sorry, this is minus, minus, uh, you would help me here, minus here, minus, minus. So if we add these two terms together, what do we get? We have this exponential, so we get uh, this is one. So what do we get from here? Are we good here? So we have the following, we get here minus 2i, we get here minus 2i, sine 
sine beta 1 to 7. Okay? So this is the, the phasor notation for the electric field. And now we need also the instantaneous expression. To find the instantaneous expression, we know what we do. We actually let me use this part of the board. Or better here. So the instantaneous expression, this is we say e1 as a function of z and time, this would be equal to the real part of the e1 as a function of z times e to the power of j omega t. Okay. So this is what we should use here. And now we have the, the real part of direction vector x ei0 minus 2. We have the i and the, so we have the i sine beta one z sine beta one z e to the power j omega t. Okay? And then we move ahead here and the i, how can we write the i? So what is, or if we see here, we have the i which is square root of minus 1. Or let's write, what is minus i? Can you determine what is minus i? So where do we find i? i? Let me write this here, or let me write it better here actually. So, we have one is right here, okay? i is here, and i is equal to e to the power of j times i over 2, okay? And the minus i, which is this point here, which we denote here in square, this minus i, this is equal to e minus, sorry, e to the power i minus pi over 2. Why? Because in the complex complex uh, coordinate system, where we put here the real parts of the numbers and here we put the imaginary parts, uh, we rotate by an angle of minus pi over 2. So this would be equal to e i minus pi over 2. Okay? So with this notation here, we insert it in this expression. And a few terms, we can take them out, so we get here x. Then we have e i zero. We have the two, okay, multiplied by two, and then we have the real part of e to the power i minus i over two. Sorry, even sine we can take the sine beta one z out because the sine it's a, it doesn't have any complex component. So we have here sine beta one z. What is else? We have the e to the power real pi of e to the power j omega t times what? Times this term, okay? So this is i. j and i are the same thing, actually. So this would be omega t minus pi over 2. Okay? So what is the real part of j omega t minus pi over 2? This would be cosine, okay, because the real part of any, any uh, exponential e to the power of j, this would be equal to cosine, cosine theta, but what is cosine uh, omega t minus pi over 2? If we have a look here, uh, can somebody answer? How would you write cosine omega t minus pi over 2? So omega t minus pi over 2, let's assume a very narrow angle, so here. Let this angle be omega t. And then the angle is omega t minus pi over 2, so we get omega t minus pi over 2 is this vector. And we are... Uh, is it sine omega t? 
I think you're right, yes. But let's make sure about this one. Uh, if you want to derive these expressions often, what you get, what we can do all together is the following. You take, you consider a narrow angle, because you will not be confused. You take an angle which is like 10 degrees. You say this is omega t, this is angle omega t minus pi over 2, right? This angle here, with respect to the x-axis. Then we have the cosine. What is the cosine of this angle here? The cosine, the cosine is here. Is this length, right? So this is the cosine, and uh, when it comes with regard to the omega t, the magnitude of this cosine of this angle here is equal to this side, right? Do you agree here? And uh, this length, it has, a, it is, it, that's true. It is sine of omega t, so because the sine here is the sine of this omega t. So we can write here directly sine omega t. So finally, this is e1 as a function of z and time. So this is the instantaneous expression for the electric field in region uh, in region one. Then we can also derive, or can, we can write down what is the the magnetic field intensity. So uh, allow me to take some time from here. And uh, the H itself, the magnetic field intensity, this would be equal, so we have here H1, Z, this would be equal to H incident Z plus H reflected as a function of Z. So they are both uh, phasors so far. We have not uh, changed them, them uh, yet. And uh, the components that we need to write for these is that they were pointing in the Y direction. So here we have in the Y direction of these waves, we have E incident amplitude divided by eta 1 times E to the power minus J beta 1 Z minus E R 0 over eta 1 E to the power J beta 1 Z. Now, with this expression, we're just subtracting two terms, and here, for the H1 Z, this would be equal to the the direction is going to be a y. We get two e i zero divided by beta one times cosine beta one z. So this is the h one z. Now we can similarly try to find the, the instantaneous expression for the magnetic field intensity and. Uh, for that, we do the same as in here. Okay, we we'll say that h1 z time, this would be equal to the real part of the... So in fact, what do we do to find, to find this expression? We just, we take the real part of the h z times e to the power j omega t. So, in fact, multiplying e to the power j omega t, imagine for a moment we are going to multiply it here. Do you observe any context term here? No, right? So, we don't see any context term in this section here. And then, when we find that the real part of this term, what do we get from the real part of e to the power j omega t? Cosine omega t. It's just cosine. So, then what we do is that we preserve everything the same. We say that this is uh, direction y e i zero divided by beta one cosine beta one z cosine omega t. So this is the instantaneous expression of the magnetic field intensity in uh, in region one. So this is all that uh, we we obtain and. Uh, then, once we, we get this, we can also try to determine what is the what is the average power density. But for this part, we may need to erase this section. I think we understood we don't need to do this anymore. And uh, uh, 
Let's see. Actually, if we look for a moment, what can we say with regard to the, the timing of E and H? It looks like they are not in phase, right? We cannot fast the electric field and the magnetic field intensity. But which one is leading? What do you think here? Because the, as a function of time, the total electric field and the total magnetic field, we have here, if we try to plot the electric field in red, as this is progressing in time, omega t, what is the, we start with zero, with second, so we're going to get a term like this, right? For the electric field. For the magnetic field, we get the following. So from here, we get to this point, we have here, here, here. It is better if we use, sorry, better if we use a different color. So you can say that H1, which just means that we are dealing, we are uh, in medium one, this is leading in one by pi over two, or E1 lags behind E1 lags behind H1 by pi over two. So E1 is delayed, or E1 it reaches the, the maximum uh, maximum value uh, by over two later. So to determine that, you can look at this shoulder. So what you can do is that you can draw such a shoulder, which is showing like clearly that this front is going to match with this front if we pull it this way by a different distance of pi over two. Now the next uh, the next step that we may need to figure out is the following, is to get the average power density and the average power density is equal to 1 over 2 times the real part of electric field cross product with the magnetic field intensity complex conjugate. Okay, so this is uh, what we should, what we should uh, do here and uh, at this stage we get the following, this is equal to uh, 1 over 2 times real part, where is the E? E itself, in a phasor notation, it is, it is this term here. So we have to consider this term here and uh, this other term here. So we should, we should pay, let me think for a moment, we should consider these two terms, which are on the board. Okay? The E and the H, because these are the two, uh, the two phasors. And uh, what we observe here is that we have the following. We have the cross product, so we have uh, X EI0 minus 2i sine beta 1 7 cross product with this is the cross product sine with what? y times 2 ei 0 um, so we have this, this uh, amplitude here 2 e 
ra zero over eta one cosine beta one center. Okay, I think this is all, and we can continue again. We get here one over two times the real part of what? What is x cross product y? What is it? We get z, right? And then we have uh, this is the direction. Then we have here, let's see here, minus 2i, which is the complex part. And then we have 2ei0 squared over eta 1 times sine times cosine, right? Now, it looks like, what can you say about the direction of the power density? So if there is some uh, power density flow, in which direction is it uh, flowing? Can you notice anything? What can you say about this? Uh, in the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay, but in which direction is the wave propagating? Z direction. Plus or minus? Plus. The, the incident one is plus. The reflected one is minus. And now, here, we are writing down, let's not forget, this E1, can you repeat, uh, Mr. can you help me here? What is this E1? Can you help us to, can you remind us what this is? That's the phasor of uh, electric intensity? Yes. Is it the incident or the reflected one? Uh, it's the incident one. Is what? Le le let me just check. Uh, it is the... It's the sum. Let's not forget, this is the incident wave plus the reflected wave is this, right? So this yeah. is the complete electric field in one region. So imagine for a moment, we have a wave, we are sending it to the, uh, to the board. Or let's send it uh, this way. Let me try to... You cannot see this. Okay, there is a, I have an object here which is at some distance, anyway. I cannot show it that way, but let's assume that we are sending it into the board. The board is, is a very good conductor. We send an incident wave, it's coming back with the reflected wave, and this E1 is the total wave, okay? These are vectors, we can add them together, right? But then, so actually, me personally, I don't know where this wave is going. This E1, because this is incident, I'm, I'm sure, this is going in the plus Z direction, right? And this, the reflected one, it was going in the minus Z direction. But I don't know yet, I'm not clear myself, where is this, where this wave is going, where the E1 is going, okay? You might use your intuition to thinking for a few minutes where this, uh, this uh, wave could, could be going, where, where, where is it? So, but then think about this one, and this is, this is also a reminder, so what is this h one cell? The h one cell is the total magnetic field intensity in one side of the region, in region 1, which is the summation of this term, the first one traveling in the plus set, the second term traveling in negative set, and this one we don't know where it's going. Okay. And the power average, this one, might help us to determine both the magnitude and to some degree also the direction of where this wave is flowing. Okay. What are we doing with this? And now let's see. What is the real part of, of this of these terms? How would you like to solve this? Shall we take out the terms that have no complex component? So what we did here is that all of these terms, sine, beta, mod, z, we took them out of the real part because they were constants. What was left inside, they were complex terms, right? So would you agree if we take them like this? We say we put here z direction times 1 over 2 times minus 2i. So these two we can, sorry, this mistake, i can take i out, right? i should stay inside. But allow me that this is 1 over 2, I can write here, but here I have another 2 actually. So this is minus 4, let me do it like this. 1 over 2 times z, I took this out, I took this out, this minus 2, this 2, this minus 4, e incident wave amplitude squared divided by uh, intrinsic impedance in the vacuum times sine cosine times the real part of what? Of i. Are we good? Can I get a confirmation? Do you agree with this with this result? 
uh, can we use uh, there uh, the identity that sinus two uh, omega t is equal to uh, two sinus omega t equals cos omega t the sinus omega t. You're in here. Yes, and because we have a, uh, a constant base two that multiplies them, we can use the identity that uh, the uh, sine two omega t is equal to two sine omega t cos sinus omega t. Yes, I agree. I agree on this here. So you are saying this. You are saying sine times cosine is equal to two sine. Is it? Am I correct? It's uh, si uh, sine two omega t over two. Oh yeah. Sorry. This is like this, and this is like this, right? Uh, I can't see what you are writing to me again. Oh, that uh, no one can see it, or is it only you? Yes, it's that one. So, yeah, so when you say omega t, for sure, uh, just give me one second, I just need to refill the, the, the. The charger. So we are seeing the following. Yeah, I think this is standard 2 sine omega t times cosine omega t. This would be equal to sine. 2 omega t. Yes, let's keep this in mind. But now, let me ask you this. What is the real part of i? What is the real part of i? What is the projection? Of the eye on the real axis, on the real on the axis which uh, de determines the the real values. What is this? Is it cosine pi over two or i to the power minus i? This pi. is cosine pi over two. Yes. What is cosine pi over two? Oh, the value is zero. Yes, it's zero. So also the real part of i is also zero. So this is zero, zero, this is all zero. So what we notice here is that we have no flow of wave, we have a standing wave, okay? So we have no flow of energy from one side to another. Why does this happen? Because we send some uh, wave to some uh, conductor and the whole wave is reflected back, okay? So in principle, we are creating a standing wave. But what does, so I think the first part, are we, are we, uh, would you agree with this result? So did we make a mistake? So it looks like everything was right. So apparently, we have no energy flow. We know that the electromagnetic waves, they do transmit the uh, wave to some, uh, which is also proportional to the amplitude of electric field square and so on. In this case, apparently, this is not uh, possible. But now, in the, in the next session, we're going to see in detail why this is a called a standing wave, okay? What makes it a standing wave? Does it mean that the wave is frozen? Let's think about this one. Does it mean that... Uh, uh, let me think for a moment. So think about this one, this question. So we have a, a conductor here, I send a signal, and the signal reflects back, and now, when we call this one a standing wave, between the source of the wave and uh, and back in this region. Uh, what is a standing wave? Does it mean that if I put a detector to measure the electric field intensity, are we going to measure zero always? This is the first question. So the signals that comes from the from the from an antenna, you can always put a detector and you can observe. You, you sit here with a detector and you measure initially five volt per meter. Then if it's a wave, this will become five, minus five volt per meter, just in time. So as time is progressing, this vector would be 5, 0, minus 5, 5, 0, minus 5. So think about this one. Could we get a similar uh, measurement from a standing wave? If you like, we can have a short break.